Andy and John sit down with the future stars of the Northern Wrestling Federation to celebrate their two-year anniversary. Welcome to the Road Home from Wrestling. Listeners, it's Andy from the Road Home from Wrestling podcast. I'm coming to you live to tape, of course, from the world headquarters of the world. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about this episode. So uh, the Northern Wrestling Federation Future Stars was supposed to have this big anniversary show on uh, April 19th, and um, it ain't going to happen. You know, it's just for the simple fact that, uh, you know, we have this virus that's screwing everything up for the entire world. Uh, so, you know, we decided we wanted to do something to kind of help them celebrate a little bit. And so we reached out to a bunch of different folks and we got a lot of interviews here. Some of them are a little longer than others. Some are a little shorter than others. But I think that this will be a great episode for folks to listen to, to kind of help celebrate that anniversary and to get to know some of the future stars that you've never heard from. So enjoy this. Uh, our first one up is actually going to be me interviewing DC Holloway. Through the system, it's DC Holloway. How you doing, DC? What's up, Juice Fruit? Thanks for having me. What's up, DC Universe? That's right. Yeah, that's right. Now, yeah. um, let's kind of talk a little bit about who DC is. Like, what is, you know, I've always thought that DC is some kind of comic book thing, but maybe it isn't. Is that right? Right. Okay, so DC Holloway, you know, I'm 19 years old, 6'4". I consider myself just like a hoss, okay? So um, where DC come from, I'm from the District of Columbia. So when people ask, like, what's that sign he's throwing up when he stepped through the curtain? What does DC stand for? That's what it stands for. I gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's good to know, you know, because as we, you know, when we first saw you, you had been coming out with a white dress shirt on and glasses like you were, you know, and we didn't recognize you. And then you ripped the shirt off. We're like, oh, my God, that's D.C. <laughs> and we get hit in the eye with one of the buttons off your shirt. I mean, what was that all about? I mean, yeah, with the entrance, I felt like I can do something different with the glasses, the dress shirt, the to everything it, it was different it was something no one else was doing so i felt like that that really got a good reaction the very first time i did it and i can't get the velcro um dress shirt so you know the buttons just fly everywhere and i feel bad if i hit somebody sorry <laughs> it's okay i i deserve to get hit <laughs> so uh, well that's pretty awesome now okay so when i first saw you you were somebody that we saw you know holding the bell and you know and doing security and stuff trying not to get the giggles you can't get the giggles that's against the rules you know and uh and you know but i was involved in the nwf fantasy camp and you <laughs> were um you were paired. You were one of the workers that was there helping people live their fantasies. And uh, yes. you were paired with someone who had some uh, mental handicap and some physical handicaps. And I just want to say I've had my eye on you ever since then because you really handled that professionally. And you did your best. And you kept him safe. And, and what else did you do? You said you uh, you let him body slam you. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He body slammed me. You, you know, you got to make him look strong. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I was, I was nervous at the time cause I was like early in, like with the whole wrestling thing. So when I got the chance to do it, I didn't really like, I just tried to work with them and everything just worked out. So That's good. That's good. Well, and, and that's at the beginning. And then we saw you and you were kind of, you know, don't take any offense to this, but you were kind of generic baby face there for a while. And yeah. now you figured out this thing, which is this kind of like holy grail of wrestling. <laughs> it's a way to be uh, a fiery baby face without being cheesy, 
what's the what's the secret to that and how have you kind of figured that part of your character out well the first thing i i, I want people to take me more serious so i don't like the all the all yeah come on come on <laughs> i like a different approach so when i come out i'm just like I'm just angry. I just got so much fire behind me. And then, you know, like, I just bring that out to the mat, and it, it gets it gets a reaction, you know. I got the DC Universe behind me. I'm, I'm not doing the, yeah, come on. I'm just, <laughs> ah, ah, you know. <laughs> it's true, but the DC Universe is expanding because it, it started is. out it started out in the Cincinnati area and now you know it's in the central Kentucky area it's up in the central Ohio area who knows where it'll show up next i mean seriously who knows they you know, know but uh tell me a little bit about working at places like primetime wrestling and rockstar pro and some of the good matchups you've had there well working at pt i love working at all these promotions by the way um I got the privilege to go up to PTW, and one of the best matches I had there was the Native Sons versus ATM, Alex Angel, and Perez. Um, it was in a street fight, too, so it was a lot of chaos. It was weapons being thrown, getting hit with weapons, all types of stuff, and it was just chaotic, but the crowd really liked it. Um, you know, it's fun to just go out there and throw down anytime. Um, I had a great match at Rockstar with Mannix. Nice. Um, yeah, it was my debut match, and me and him went toe to toe, and that was a really good match to like let people know at Rockstar who DC is. That's awesome, uh, Austin Mannix, tremendous wrestler. Uh, yeah. Another guy that's kind of. You know, I, he's been on the show before, and, you know, I found out when I interviewed him that he's, like, a 13- or 14-year vet, or maybe longer than that, and I did not know that. Um, like, it's kind of interesting, because, like, he's just now coming into his own as this, like, striking guy, and I... I would wager to um, or, or imagine that you guys threw a couple forearms in that match. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Like, th ones, like 300 of them, I bet. So <laughs> that's pretty awesome, man. Well, you know, it's interesting to me, too, because your style has turned into kind of like a striker type wrestler. And usually um, when a guy is your size, it's all about power. What um, are you planning on changing any of that at all? Or is this kind of like what you're just kind of evolving into who you evolve into? And that's kind of what you want to do. Um, well, I'm always trying to change it up a little bit. And once this whole Corona thing blows over and we're back there, you might see some different style wrestling for me. Um, you know, I just like to do it all. I, I don't want to be the guy that's just set to one thing. You know, I like to do it all. And all. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, well, I appreciate it, man. And, uh, you know, most people, I mean, some people may know this, some people may not, but you are a former owner of the Road Home from Wrestling podcast. You, Kimba, and Lexus Montez uh, were owners there as the Native Sons for a while. Um, how does it feel to be uh, part of the few, the proud, the former owners of the Road Home from Wrestling? Hey, man, it feels good because <laughs> I've never been a leader of, like, podcasts podcast or anything. And, you know, from time to time, I, I listen to the podcast. I actually take stuff from the podcast like because, you know, you give your honest opinions and stuff like that. And, you know... <laughs> it's, it's been a blast, bro. Well, I appreciate that. You know, we kind of all consider ourselves part of the wrestling family in this area, and I'm glad right. you're part of that too, man. So, uh, well, where can folks find you on the internet? And, uh, you know, do you have any questions or any other comments that you want to throw out there? Um, well, you can find me. My main source right now is DC Ruffin on Facebook. All right. And uh, let's see here. Well, do you have anything else that you want to add to folks? Um, stay safe out there. And keep cheering for DC. You know, I'm out here. Just trying to fulfill the fans, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, man, I can't wait to be back in the ring and and let people really know, like, my full potential and stuff like that.
I mean, it might be years before he even hit that, too. You know what I mean? That's the yeah, thing about cool. wrestling is that, you know, we see these guys that have gone, you know, been going for a couple of years and they hit a level. And if they keep going, they're going to keep hitting those levels. And, you know, it's amazing. I mean, you know, you could take guys like like Jake Parnell, who is a longtime vet on the indies, and he just recently has started to become super over because of this character, uh, the Warhorse character. So, you know, we can't wait to see what you do next and uh, can't wait to see you back in the ring, man. So thanks so much for joining us uh, today. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, that was a great interview. I'll tell you what. This next one's going to be great, too. John sits down with one of our favorites from Northern Wrestling Federation Future Stars, Mean Selena Dean. All right. Well, I am joined by the smallest and meanest member of the NWF roster, Selena Dean. How's it going, Selena? Uh, it's uh, It's been going, you know, just pretty slow, obviously, just hanging out at home. Can't yeah. really be mean to anybody, can't bully anybody, so what's the well, point? Well, I mean, you could start, like, bullying people on social media, I guess, if you wanted. Yeah, I, I got, like, uh, I used to do the whole cyber bully thing when I was in high school. Kind of grew out of it, so. Well, it sounds like it might be a good time to grow back into it, then, since you can't bully anybody in the streets. Maybe. You gotta, you gotta stay six feet apart. Well, I'm not, you know, I'm into breaking rules, so. I could oh. I could probably get like two feet from somebody and freak them out, do a little <clears throat> cough and a sniff and put I them in you, panic. You could probably just look at someone from like across the street and still like cast fear into their eyes. I would think. Oh yeah, for sure. Like uh, most of the time, like when we do go out to uh, the Walmart or you know Meyer, everybody's looking. They're stepping aside because they already know. They, like, see you coming down one end of the aisle, and they're like, oh, crap, I can't go down this one. Yeah, I'll better wait. turn around. The cereal is mine, lady. <laughs> uh, so you are mean. Why Why are you so mean? Did someone hurt you in your life? You know, um, that's, a, that's a very good question, bud. Uh, so, like, I've never been given anything, you know nothing's been handed to me and I see all these people that just get stuff handed to them left and right where they don't deserve it and you know I work super hard regardless of what anybody says and so I'm just I've been over it you know since 95 to 2020 I've been fed up with it and I'm just I just don't take crap from anybody because you know I I've earned everything that I've ever worked for and it just makes me sick seeing all these like smiling faces that just willy-nilly get whatever they they please you know is there someone you're referring to that you don't want to call out oh i think we know who it is like i ain't got no problem uh calling her out because she already knows and that's a good old nikki victory oh my gosh the starlet of the nwf do you have a problem with her Oh, obviously, I uh, I can't stand her, her and her little peace sign bull crap and that fake fake smile and everybody in the NWF uh, army, they uh they believe it, man, but not me. I see right through it. I think it's the bright colors she wears. Everyone's attracted to bright colors, and so they're yeah. like, Hey, oh. I got neon gear too. All right, nobody's pushing for me. Well, it's because you have this hard exterior, I think, that uh, makes people a little hesitant. You know, when you're always scowling, uh, it's harder to, you know, feel invited to have a conversation than someone who's always smiling. You know what I mean? I guess. But, uh, you know, that's everybody else's fault. They uh, they don't give anybody a chance, I guess. Yeah, you got to force your way in there. And uh, speaking of forcing your way in there. Uh, there was a time I remember at a show where you attacked Big Mama with a hammer, taking her out and uh, forcing a tag team match to turn, turn into a handicap match. Uh, what's the deal with that? And where'd the hammer go? Uh, I, I still got it. It's hanging up on the wall, actually. You know, uh, 
a little homage, you know. Uh, so, <sighs> Big Mama was a big problem for Selena Dean here. Um, she just, uh, she's another one that fake smile, got the whole, who wants to take a ride? Nobody. You're literally walking, lady. You don't have a bike. You don't have a motorcycle, because I feel like that's what she says is motorcycle. But she's had her time, and her time has obviously came and went, because I don't think we've seen Big Mama in a long time. We haven't. We haven't seen her since that night. The, and I, uh, I did NWF. everybody a favor, I think, so. Yeah, the NWF teacher doctor would not clear her for action, and she's yeah. not been cleared since. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I still see her from time to time hobbling around, but. So she's hey. still uh, she's still chasing that spotlight, trying to, but you're like, no, I've already taken it off of you. Exactly. Stay put. Uh, so. That's rough. I mean, Big Mama, she's got a lot, a lot of people supporting her, and uh, they're they've all been missing her. Are you worried that she's gonna come back at some point in the near future and uh, get some revenge? Well, I mean, if she decides to, by all means, uh, she can come in a quote unquote, take my ride and uh, I'll, I'll do something else to her. Maybe that other need needs some work and done. So if Big Mama takes rides on a motorcycle, what kind of rides are you giving rides on? Like what's uh, your vehicle of choice? I mostly take rides in like back of police cars and everything. So maybe oh. she can... Uh, you know, hop in the back of an ambulance after I'm done with her. Wow, that took a real turn. I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so friendships are hard for you. I, is that an easy is that an easy assumption I'm making there? No, like um, I I actually have a best friend, and uh, her name is uh, Selena Dean because that's the only friend I need. But I thought you and uh, Ella had a friendship going, right? Or uh, what's, what's going on there? I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, an acquaintanceship where, uh, you know, we met, kind of, you know, liked each other. And then, you know, it's like, I'm not going to lie. She's crazy, dog. I know. I've seen. Uh, yeah. She, uh. She done that scream like one too many times when we were hanging out, and I was like, "Yo, pump the brakes, sister. We uh, we ain't that cool." So. I have a suggestion. Uh, they make some really nice noise canceling headphones. Like I have some some Beats Studio ones that I can't hear anything when I have them on. Maybe when you're hanging out with Ella, it'd be good to put some of those on. Yeah, you know, maybe I might think about that. But uh, I think uh, she's back in the mental institution so uh i might not have to worry about buying anything as of late you know yeah that's true uh but when you guys were hanging out one of the last you know memories I, i've seen of you two uh there was a moment where you were pushing drugs onto ella and then making her become this like alter ego named elizabeth and it gets a little like muddy is is Elizabeth and Ella the same person? Um, uh, first of all, it is uh, medication, not drugs. I don't know <laughs> what you think the NWF and Selena Dean pushes, but uh, we like to call it medication. But uh, to me, Ella and Elizabeth are the same person. Uh, I prefer to talk to Elizabeth because uh, she's the more sane one. Um, she's a little too peppy for me, but that's besides the point. Um, but, you know, Ella just liked to get in my way after a shadow disappeared. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I don't like Ella necessarily because she, uh, she stepped too close to the line where the line was drawn about me getting the title and only me getting the title. We decided on that, and she just decided to go John Wayne style and, you know, go out for herself and not think about the team. Okay. Um, I've seen you and Nikki have had a few matches for the NWF Women's Revolution Championship, and you've taken her to her limits. 
quite a few times. Do you think that if you're able to square up with her one more time, that you're finally going to be able to capture that title? Oh, uh, most certainly. If we did a, uh, you know, uh, a special rules match um, where there was no crossbodies needed, most definitely. Because apparently that crossbody is my ultimate demise, and I'm willing to admit that. But if, uh, you know, get in there, give her the old razzle-dazzle, and then, you know, I'm going to eventually be the Women's Revolution champion, whether she likes it or Roger likes it or the NWF Army likes it. That's what the future holds, and that's what's going to happen. So why, if you know that the crossbody is your downfall, why aren't you just studying tapes right now to figure out how to avoid that move? Well, you see, uh, it's a lot different when you're in there. You're in the moment, and you just you get you get duped a lot sometimes. So. But uh, I, I guess you are right. I got to look at uh, tapes and see when exactly she goes for it and everything. But, you know. You could start maybe uh, setting up like booby traps in your house and then maybe like forgetting about them. Kind of like a lot of wrestling matches, you know, you like set up a, a table spot and then you like you get the audience distracted and they forget that the table's there. So maybe what you could do at your house, you could set up uh, different scenarios where like a pillow is coming at you for a crossbody, like, and you step on like a tripwire and it launches at you and then you could start learning to like evade it that way. I mean, it's just a suggestion, but I feel like it might work. True. And, uh, I could also practice like catching like heavy weights. So next time I could just catch her and dump her and then that would be it. Yeah. Go see if you can find like a, like I, I think home depots and Lowe's are still open. Maybe go get like a bag of cement. But don't get it wet because you don't want it to turn into cement and just have that like kind of slingshot at you. And you can start learning to like catch it and like roll through and then body slam it. I don't know. You know. Yeah, that, you make a, a good point there. And I sometimes, you know, I have a lot of downtime to think right now. And I'm just trying to help out my wrestling friends, you know, and make sure that they can win their titles. Yeah. Or did you just say that we're friends? Oh, uh, no, I, that word slipped out. Uh, yeah, because you're I, mistaken, so you better yeah. chill out. I am very sorry. Please do not uh, leave any, like, burning poop on my front doorstep. I I would not want that. Well, actually, you might want to go check, so. Oh, okay, maybe in Just a minute. Just remember to stomp it out. No, I will not do that. Uh but you mentioned somebody who I was going to bring up later, but now that you've already brought them into the conversation, I'd like to talk about him. The Shadow. Where has he been? You know what he used to say? Uh, you know, like, the shadows know. So uh, I-, I assume he's uh, in the shadows. Do you think he's ever going to come back? Like, is there I... going to be, is there be enough know. light to, like, cast a shadow to bring him back? I mean, it's almost summertime, so there might be, you know, the sun's out longer and everything. Um, but, uh, you know, if he does, he better steer clear because um, I ain't about that life anymore. Whoa, why? What happened? Just, uh, if you want to put it into words, uh, it's too dark of a place. You know, uh, I'm pretty malicious, but I'm not sinister uh can you let the audience know what was in that that like uh chalice that he always brought to the ring and he made you girls drink from it what what were you drinking you know he wouldn't ever tell us but uh i like to think of it as uh the kool-aid um you know like what cult leaders get people to drink uh yeah yeah so but uh, it definitely re- wasn't Kool-Aid. That like it got sprayed in my face uh, a couple of times, and I had to go to get my eyes checked quite a few times after. Yeah, rumor has it that it is squid ink. Can you confirm or deny that? I cannot because he never let us see it being made. 
so I, I'm no help there. And so the only time you really saw it was when you looked into the chalice or when it was being spit in your eyes? Yeah. Okay. Because it's blinded many of people. And so I'm really wondering what kind of, like, things are inside of that liquid. I don't know. Like, when he used to pour it, like, out of uh, this big, like, cauldron thing, it was, like, smoking and stuff. So it's uh, super hard to tell. Yeah, I didn't want anything to do with it, but I did enjoy watching people get hit with it. I know it caused Nikki to go blind in an eye for an entire day, and so it's dangerous. Yeah, she was. I think she was still able to beat Shadow in a match, even with only one eye. But I mean, we don't talk about that. That's all right. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We'll move on. Uh, I kind of want to do. I haven't done this with any other interview, but I thought it might be fun to do with you. I kind of want to do like a word and uh, a word association. Are you down with that? Uh, yeah. So you know, you know the whole gist. Like I give you a name and you give me like a cup, a word or two of what you think about them. Like what comes to mind and everything. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Here's a couple of them. I got ten of them. So let's see. With we'll kind of go through them quick. Uh, Loca Flora. Hater. Wow. Jay Donaldson. He was all right, but I hate him. Wow, it's real hateful. Veronica Vaughn. Yo, super hate, dude. <laughs> Noah Gabriel. Ugh, good. I, I don't even have a comment on that kid. That stupid beanie. <laughs> is he a wrestler? Do you think he's a wrestler? Or no, is he... In that born to wrestle hashtag, I wish Twitter would ban him so hard, man. I cannot stand that kid. Wow. He's an announcer and that's it. All right. What about Hugo? Who? Hugo. I, I don't know who that is, honestly. Oh, okay. He, uh, well. He's not around enough, so. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, Kayla Cassidy. Ugh. She's a she's a piece of work, all right. Ella. She's a mm, pretty uh crazy. You know, she's she's okay, no a y, but she's all right. Kobe King. Ugh. Good God, have we seen him? Uh, you know, honestly, I might change the title that I want to the unified title, and I might just go beat him down. I would love to see that match. I'd love to see you get in the ring and beat up all the boys. Yeah, uh, especially, like, I, I've been on this kick. I really want to beat the crap out of Star Rider. <laughs> don't, don't, we'll get, we'll get to Star Rider. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nikki Victory. Oh, my God. There, there's like a million page essay that I could write about her, and it's all negative. She's a uh, she's a good wrestler. I will give her that, but I hate her, despise okay. her. Fair enough. Uh, last one, Hollywood Adam Swayze. You know he's a uh, he's pretty good looking and all, but uh, he seems kind of snobby. Yeah, yeah, he's he's really got that like that arrogance about him that makes you want to talk to him, but then you get close and you're like, never mind. I changed my mind. Yeah. One time he, uh, he asked me for a piece of gum backstage and that like, I don't know. That, that was kind of a highlight cause he's really famous. So he's, okay. he is, he is famous. Do you have a favorite, uh, Adam Swayze movie? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was in top gun. What? That's pretty doing? cool. Yeah. What character was he playing? You know, uh, everybody confuses him with uh, what's his name? Tom Cruise. I'm pretty sure he yeah. he had the lead role. Obviously, he's a huge. It's very reason. it's very easy to get those two confused. Because I was gonna say Mission Impossible Four was my favorite Adam Swayze movie. Uh, I thought he really peaked his performance in at number four of uh, Mission Impossible. Yeah, one was good, but. But four was cloud nine. That was good. And it's hard to do because sequels are not usually that great. No, there's only a few series that uh, can pull it off right. All right. Well, kind of in our closing thoughts here, I know 
you kind of mentioned Star Rider, and I wanted to really dig into this one because I I've been seeing on social media, especially on Twitter, you've got a lot of beef with Star Rider. Why is that? You know, I, I'm trying to get beef with him because uh, he uh. He's just a quiet individual, and honestly, he just popped up out of nowhere. Like, uh, didn't see him for a long time. He kind of changed gears and, you know, looked different from time to time for a while. Um, But now we've seen the same one for quite some time, and uh, I want to get to know him because uh, I I feel like I could just toss him pretty far, and... uh, I want to see how that works out because you know my buddy David Tyler he kicks the crap out of him all the time and you know yeah I've only seen them have a, a match here and there um I wish I saw it more often but uh you know what can you do I don't I don't have the book in at NWF so I don't get to see the matches as much as I want uh but that's all right so you think you could just beat up Star Rider you think I you could, could- you can take he him looks like a, he's 120 pounds. He might be, but he's got like he's had a few abs and like a little bit of a you know bicep. You think you you could stand a chance against that? Yeah, I'm a yeah for sure. I'm confident in that one. What do you think of his tan? Because he went from being very pale. Yo, he went from sudden, being like powder to uh, dirt. Yeah, like real quick. Yeah, that's called a fake and bake. Um, so he he's not flying too close to the sun nowadays. That's a that's a that's a tanning bed. I don't know. That's what I was worried about because you know he went from being real pale to real <laughs> dark like pretty quick, and I was worried that he was flying too close to the sun because he's been getting a little cocky now here lately too, and showing a little more aggression than we're used to. Uh, and I don't. What do you think about Jeremiah trying to steal his mask? Are you mad that you aren't the one that's able to steal his mask? Well, you know, I respect culture, and uh, Jeremiah took it a little too far, I think. But um, yeah, I mean, I I feel like me and Jeremiah could agree that we both hate the Star Rider, so I I think I would have done it a little differently. But uh, you know. Just the disrespect on the the lucha door, you know. You want you want Star Rider, you know. If he wants to take the mask off, he should be able to do it on his own terms. Yeah, I I want to have a match where if I win, he has to take it off like that classic. I'm not going to disrespect him and the whole culture by ripping it off and taking it for myself. Um, so. I would do it in a more respectable manner, if you will. So what are you giving up then if you're having a mask versus something match? Oh, you know, it, it uh, it's just the mask on the line. There is so, nothing to partake. So nothing, nothing on your head. You no, know, he'll, your get, he'll get the term that he's most dangerous if he wins. So not your hair? I mean, I'll shave off an eyebrow or something, I guess. What about maybe your car keys? Like, he can have your car, and you can have his mask. Uh, yeah, my car is, uh, got a lot of payments left, so he can totally take that. Okay, well, hey, you know, just don't let him know that he's gonna have to foot the bill, because then, you know, if he beats you, and then your car gets, like, repossessed, like, heh, joke's on you. True. All right. Well, that's all the questions I got for you. You got any closing thoughts or uh, statements you want to make before we head out here? No. I, uh, I just hate everybody, you know, little and generally unhappy. So where can everybody find you on the uh, social networks? So I, uh, I got an Instagram finally, um, of course, in the time where we don't have anything to post. Um, but it's a, uh, at the Deanster 95, um, it's just Dean, S-T-E-R 95. Um, and then on Facebook, me and Selena Dean. And then the same is on Twitter, me and Selena Dean. And it's right. Selena, S-A-L-E-N-A. I cannot stand somebody who spells my name wrong. Wow. You can't stand a lot of people. And probably a lot of people spell it wrong because that's a very uncommon 
spelling. Yeah, well, it, it pays to be different, baby. I ain't, right. I ain't Selena Gomez with the S E L. Like, ugh, basic people stress me out. That's why I got a problem with everybody. All these basic, basic bitches. All of them. All right. Well, thank you so much, Selena, for joining us. And I look forward to seeing what you have next. All right. Thank you, John. I'm very jealous of Andy's next interview. He got a chance to talk one-on-one with my personal favorite actor, Hollywood, Adam Swayze's personal body double, Rex. All right, folks, we're now being joined on this future star spectacular by a man who's no longer a future star but once was, Hollywood Rex. Rex, how you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing as well as can be. I, I hope you're safe and, and not sick. Yeah, yeah, sick stay, staying, staying safe from the Coachella virus. Yeah, I, that's it. I don't, I don't know if you saw it, but I, I really I wanted to make sure people were safe and people were staying Staying safe during this horrible thing that's going on. I I I I asked the boss. I said, boss, we gotta we gotta teach people, we gotta educate people how to stay safe from the Crayola virus going on. And and so we we got the studio studio time ready and, and we made a video and, and and he we showed people. Well, I'm assuming that you know, Hollywood Adam Swayze, your boss, and, and, and Gideon, your uh, you know, manager, that they are also not sick and they're safe as well, right? No, yeah, absolutely. We are staying very social distance from all the poor, dirty, just nasty, nasty schmuck people. And uh, we have you know, we've got like eight mansions to pick from. So when we get tired of social distancing in one house, we just privately fly ourselves to one of our other mansions and we and we have a grand old time okay well that sounds pretty good sounds like you got a handle on this now you know the future stars of nwf is celebrating their second year anniversary now the stupid virus that you know i don't remember the name of it but that virus that you were talking about yeah, it has, virus. there you go baloney virus it has ruined you know pro wrestling right now it's canceled everything so you know, I wanted to have you on and a bunch of the other folks that have been through the Future Star system. What I mean, what was your experience like in the NWF Future Stars uh, system? Uh, well, so coming into the Future Stars, I uh, my an old you know Gideon, my our boss, my little boss, as, as we say, Adam, Adam, Mr. Swayze, that's the big boss. But oh, Gideon, yeah. Gideon, that's a that's a little boss. Not little as in size, but just he's he's the boss above me, but then the big boss is the boss above the boss, you know? It's the hierarchy of, of Hollywood. I yeah, guess. exactly, exactly. So little boss came to me and said, you know, Rex, I know you've been trying to, you know, break into the, the Hollywood scene. I know you've been trying to go out and, and do the things. Well, I've got I've got a proposition for you. And I said, kid, I said, what what do, what do you got? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. And he said, I want you to meet my star client. Okay, I want you to meet the biggest of the big. And I, I said, I said, you you don't you don't mean him. You don't you don't mean Adam Swayze. And Gideon, he told me that he met Adam Swayze. He needed me personally to work what started as a somewhat of a protection for Adam Swayze. There was this big guy, there was this that you know DC. You remember. Yeah. Yeah. You remember him. I beat that schmuck. Did yeah, he, he I actually a... talked to him briefly. Um, I don't know if it'll be before briefly. or after this interview, but he appeared on the show and I mean he didn't do nearly as well as you're doing. I mean, obviously. So the only 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 two people that could ever do better than me are Gideon Weinstein and Adam Swayze. That's fair. That's fair. Now um I'm, I'm the third best of the best. So Gideon brought you in, um, you know, to kind of be protection for Adam Swayze, but that also um, kind of morphed into a new position for you. How, when did you realize that you and Adam Swayze look exactly the, like each other? Well, yeah, so that was – we all I, – I, I grew up idolizing Mr. Swayze. Uh, you know, Gideon would, would – would send us movies he was in, projects he was working on it, and let us see. And so during that, I just, I felt this. So I looked up to him. I felt this idolization of him. And so when he finally told me, he said, hey, we need somebody for protection. I said, oh, you know me. 
biggest, baddest guy on the block. So they, they fooled me up. And, and it wasn't until we, we first met in person, looking at each other, kind of like one of the scenes from one of his movies where you, you just see that person standing there and you go, Yo, is, is this me? Am I just looking in a mirror? And he, it would have been one of them funhouse mirrors because he's so much taller than me. But we just we realized right away that with with the proper cosmetics, because, I mean, I'm no looker. I'm no stunner like Adam Swayze. But with the proper treatment to me, I, I mean, it's not spot on, but it's pretty close. And well, so, it's a, it's amazing what, you know, modern makeup and, and practical effects can do, you know, for someone like you who's, you know, I mean, you're a handsome guy, but you're you're nothing compared to Hollywood Adam Swayze. Okay. None of us are. None of us are. It's just the way it is. Right. What's oh. your um? what's the first Hollywood Adam Swayze you remember seeing as a, as a baby? As a baby. A lot of people don't know this. But one of Adam Swayze's first roles as a child was the voice of Charlie Brown. And so growing up in the mean streets of Brooklyn, one of the things that while, while my parents worked, a lot of people don't know this, but, but mom and dad were gone a lot. They, they worked hard to, to provide for me and my older brother. And that's actually how I, how I got to know Gideon. Gideon was friends with my older brother. And Gideon, you know Gideon, he's, a, he's the smartest guy I know. Most oh, brilliant sure. guy on the earth. And, you know, sometimes if, if mom and dad were gone too late or, or dad had to work a triple of nights and, and mom was too busy pulling up double shifts, Gideon would look after us, you know. Wow. And so Gideon took us under his wing. And unfortunately, you know, my brother, my brother's not around too much anymore. He moved up north. He moved up north. I don't, I don't know what he's doing up there. He left us. He left us. He left us. And Gideon took okay. care. Of, Gideon took care of me. Wow! And now Adam takes care of both of you. That that's pretty awesome. You guys have a family now. That, you... that he's like he's like one of my best friends. I love that guy. Yeah, I the mean, big you, he's the best. So, um, well, back to the future stars. I know I want to talk about Adam Swayze too. I mean, we could do that for hours. And but I mean, what else is there to be said? It's all been said before. So you You're know. Right. Um, it, it, but the future star still is kind of, you know, a situation we could talk about that a little bit where you have, um, you were the handpicked, uh, champion down there. Tell me a little bit about how that all happened. So, I mean, there's not much to say, really. When you looked at that division, you lined us all up. I mean, come on. Who is it going to be? There was no other choice than Rex, than me. I was the only guy. What, what were they going to do? DC, beat him. What were they going to do? Josh Adams, no way. <laughs> what were they going to do? The Shadow, that guy's not even a real thing. He's like, he's like some weird, masky creature thing. No way. He's not even around anymore. He like, somebody turned a light on and he disappeared or something. Who, who, what were they going to do? Jay Donaldson, one of the smartest men on the planet looked at that division and saw nothing he looked at me and he saw everything he knew from the second they brought me up that i was going to take that division to new heights and that's exactly what i did How, how'd you get so good at wrestling rex well look growing up on the mean streets of brooklyn your mom your mom your dad are out sometimes you gotta go do things yourself you know what i'm saying Sometimes as a kid, sometimes as a teenager, a young adult, you don't always uh, you don't always have money in your pocket. Now, hey, I never got to worry about that again, do I? <laughs> sometimes growing up, to make ends meet, to get the things you need, maybe you had to have a couple slippery fingers, maybe you had to you know hide a, hide behind a couple walls, but not me. If I wanted it, I took it, and if anybody challenged me. I was the biggest, baddest guy on the block. That's why they called me up to protect Mr. Swayze, and that's why I'm still around. I got no so kidding. good because I did what I had to do, and look where I am now. I mean, you're at the top, you know, and and you're no longer even a future star. You're now, uh, you know, current tag team champion, and I mean, it's a two-time tag champion team. now, right? WF Hollywood Blondes. Sounds good, doesn't it? Just rings off the tongue. It's you know it's a, 
that name before. We that's what I was saying. That. It's a genius name that I've never heard before. So uh, that's incredible, man. I don't yeah, know where you guys came up with that. Put a lot of brain power in it. Well, you know, we work in Hollywood, and we both have blonde hair. Oh, okay. I'm sure I'm like, get it. But I, I'm, hey, it, what do you do? You know, it's a I, thinker. I, I can only do, you know, I'm, I'm just as God made me, you know, I can't be any more. I can't be any less. I just am what I am. And so, you know, I understand and I appreciate the fact that, you know, first of all, taking the time to talk to a schmuck as your words, you know, uh, like myself and also, you know, all of our schmuck listeners that are out there, because I mean, there's a lot of them and, you know, they don't know a lot about Rex. So we're going to wrap this up, but what's one thing, um, that, that you want the folks that are listeners out there to understand about Hollywood Rex. One thing, and it's this. You said earlier, you're nothing more, nothing less than what God made you. And that's why you're a schmuck doing an, an interview right now. That's why I'm on the top. I didn't accept that. I didn't accept that I was no more or no less. I said, no, I'm going to be more. To who we, with what I am, I'm making myself better. I'm putting myself at the top. And now me, Mr. Swayze, and Gideon are looking down on all you schmucks from any one of our seven mansions and just sitting back lavishly enjoying the luxuries of life. And y'all are running around like chickens with your head cut off during this Coachella thing, this Crayola virus going around, killing people. Well, guess what? We ain't got to worry about none of that. Because we did not accept that we were just as we were. We pushed. We became better. We became the best. I heard a rumor, and I don't know if this is true or not, but, you know, you mentioned the the eight mansions. I heard that Adam Swayze uh, took one of those mansions and completely filled it with toilet paper just for fun. Is that right? One. Buddy, check, check, check your sources. We've got two. Two mansions filled with the toilet paper. I I also heard that he drives by grocery stores just to laugh at people that can't, you know, can't get toilet paper because he has it all. Is that right? Not not exactly. We would never, ever put ourselves that close to to these disgusting people. We have one of our employees drive a car as they hold a screen in which he is via satellite seeing through laughing at these people that have to be out there breathing up all the disgusting air. We would never put ourselves that close. That's ridiculous. That's fair. That's fair. Well, we don't want you to get any viruses, and I'm glad you guys have plenty of butt wipe. That's very important. Uh, <laughs> where can folks find Hollywood Rex on uh, on social media? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at the Handpick Unified Champion because I was – and I will always be the handpicked NWF Unified Champion. I don't care what Colby Cheese has to say anything about it. You can find me on Twitter at WrestleRex. Because if anybody wants to step up, I'm ready to wrestle anybody. Outstanding, man. Well, I, I thank you so much. Um, you know, I appreciate you guys lowering your fee just a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. And, uh, you know, the check's in the mail, as usual. And uh, hopefully you guys get it soon because I don't want you showing up at my door to uh, collect it. Absolutely. If it bounces, you're in for it, buddy. All right. Thanks so much, man. <laughs> that Rex, he sure is something. Well, next, folks, we have an interview with John sitting down with the unified champion, kind of the top guy at the Northern Wrestling Federation Future Stars. This is a first-time-ever interview, so check that out next. It's Kobe Kane. All right, well, I am being joined by the current reigning and defending NWF unified champion, Kobe Kane. How's it going, Kobe? It's going great, man. Thanks. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, how's uh, life been going, you know, without wrestling right now? It's, uh, well, I mean, obviously, we, we want to be out there. We want to be doing our thing. But, you know, you can just kind of, everything happens for a reason, I suppose. And, you know, it's a good time to sit back and reflect and, you know, try to maybe add some stuff to your game. Yeah, and I think it's a probably a pretty good time to, like, any nagging injuries you might have been, you know, suffering from that you're not telling anybody about, you're given time to recover right now. 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's a nice little rest period. Um, it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a blessing in that you know you just get to sit back and you get to look at the grand the grand scheme of things and you know it's 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 a good it's a good time to just yeah you know, like you said just heal up and prepare for what's next and get a game plan going forward. Yeah. So like I said at the top of the show. Uh, the interview, you are the current unified champion. And what does being the champion mean to you? It, I mean, it means everything really. I mean, it means, it means you're, you know, you're the leader of the future stars. You're, you know, you're kind of the anchor of the division. And, um, it's, it's something I, it's something I really, really enjoy. Um, is just, you know, leading this, this group of guys and, you know, trying to be the best we can be so what do you do with the guys who don't want to fall under your leadership because you know like you said you're kind of the locker room leader for the future stars so how do you deal with guys like uh like icon and dakota wolf and zachary slater who don't want to take part in any of your leadership uh (laughs) well with well with icon i've me, me and him have We've always had a, a a misunderstanding between us. We've always <laughs> wanted to kind of go on different paths. And um, as for the other two, as for Dakota and Zachary, well, it they just I don't know. They, they just they want to come in and say that I'm bad for the division and I'm doing it wrong and we're all screwed basically. And I don't I, f- I think that's a misunderstanding as well. I think. I think we're the future stars is thriving under me, and I think I'm, I'm the best leader that we can have, in my opinion. Wow, it's a bold statement, but uh, that's what a leadership should or a leader should have as like their opinion. Um, mm-hmm. You talked about Icon. Can you kind of give me like a rundown of your guys' history? So, well, I guess we could start with. What, why did you get into wrestling? Like, what made you decide that, you know, you wanted to be a professional wrestler and you wanted to, you know, take over the reins at NWF, so to speak? Um, I mean, it's, it's like like everybody else, right? Everybody has, like, that one moment where they see a, res- they see a wrestler or you see a match or they see it on TV and they're just, they're hooked, you know, and, and, and that was me. And what was that match? Do you know? What was that match? I, I can't say a specific match, but I can say a specific wrestler, and that was, uh, well, two wrestlers, really. It was The Rock and then Stone Cold. Okay. I, I guess you could argue that feud kind of just, you know, their back and forth, their, their promo ability, it's, it's, it, was, it was amazing. The, the, the build-up, everything to it was just amazing. Yeah, I agree. I remember very vividly that whole storyline and their feud that took years uh, so with their inspiration, you decided you want to become a wrestler. And, uh, so what's that look like since then? I'm sorry, what was that? Like, what has that looked like since then? Like wanting to become a wrestler, like what have been the steps that you've had to take to get there? Um, well, I started off, uh, for those of you who don't know, I actually started off as a ref. Um, okay. I was, I was refing and, and I was, uh, reluctantly pulled into a match with with icon and and uh i lost that match and uh, i had to be his his sheep his protege his prodigy yeah and it kind of just he he had a vision in mind for me and i i just I, I didn't i didn't i didn't see that vision i saw something else i saw something better i think yeah, because a lot of times I remember, you know, this this whole feud or like managerial thing going on where Icon kept trying to like force you to do these dirty things that you weren't down with because, you know, right. you're a good guy. You're standing up for, you know, the what's wrong or standing up against it. And so, you know, how did you kind of handle dealing with him forcing you to do these things? It was... It was, I mean, I mean, in the beginning, it, it was, it was more of me trying to convince him to do the right thing and, and, you know, be, be the right guy, you know? Um, but eventually it, it, it got to a point where, 
you know, you just, you just realize that some people don't change and he didn't see it the way I saw it. And then eventually he got a, a new protege that, you know, wanted to be just like him. So and then from there, we kind of split off. Yeah. So for a while there, he was kind of hanging this contract over your head of like he had the rights to your career and for a while there you had to kind of like deal with him not being willing to even put that on the line right and so uh what what was it that kind of officially got him to be willing to let your contract be on the line um when well yeah, yeah i, I kind of he kind of had to string me along he um i, I had to play his game really like he, he wanted me to be bad and not not play his game in that like I would do you know dirty things but just in that you kind of gotta you know go with emotion for a little bit and then eventually got to the point where me and Rex had we he'd had I don't know if it was an open challenge versus a match but we 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 squared off and man that I don't know I just I I kind of just fell in love with that pressure. I mean, you're 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 talking about going against Rex. He's six ten. He's he's a big boy. And um, that title match. I mean, I lost, but that pressure, that that you know, that championship. I I wanted it, and I know I I couldn't get it if Icon was still looming over me. So it got to the point where I kind of had to just win the rumble. Like we had the rumble, I think in January. And yeah, I, I finally, I won the rumble. I got the contract for the title match and, um, I kind of saw that and he wanted the title as well. And I, 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 t- I told him, I'll tell you what, I'll put up this contract. You put up my contract winner takes all. And on Thanksgiving, I beat him. Yeah. So you can kind of say icons pride got the best of him. He yep. thought that, you know, you were an easy beat when obviously you weren't. Right. Uh, do you think that he was nervous to let you free from your contract because he knew that you were going to be better than him in in a lot of different areas? Um, I, I think he saw. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I think he saw the potential. I, I think he saw what I could become. And I think he, he tried to mold it into what he wanted me to become. And I don't know. You just, I made the decision and I don't know. I think I made a pretty good decision. I I would agree. I think you're much better off without him. And, you know, even if you had to give up your title shot, if he had beat you, uh, you know, I think still trying to break free from that was a better option than staying like as his lackey, like right. Chris Demise is still. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so, um, you finally were able to break free, and then you had your big kind of like rematch for the unified title at FanFest last year, where you had to take on Rex again with Gideon. And I, I don't know if Swayze was in his corner or not, but you still had to take on this huge dude and his little manager outside of the ring. How were you able to kind of like get the confidence to overcome those odds? Because he's much bigger than you. Um, yeah, he is much bigger than me. Um, it's, and, and the thing with Rex is, is that he's, he's not just big, man. He, he's fast. He can move. I mean, he's big, but he, his agility is, is off the charts. Um, and that was a tough match. Um, that's actually, at FanFest was actually, that's, that's not when I overcame him. That's, it's not, um, no, I, I overcame him on Thanksgiving. Dang it. I can't believe I got yeah. my facts wrong. Yeah, no, at FanFest, um, it was Swayze who was in his corner, and, you know, he, he, of course, he played a part. Yeah. Messing with Ref Aaron, he, Ref Aaron was all over the place trying to deal with him and Swayze, and he, he, he had a, he had a rough day. Aaron did, and, of course, naturally, Swayze distracted Ref Aaron, and then I got slid in behind me and hit me with the chain. But, yes, that's right. Yeah, I mean, what what are you gonna do though? You, it's me against three other guys, and it's, 
you know, it is, I mean, no mistakes, you know, I lost them. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses or, you know, try to get sympathy or anything like that. But, you know, ref Aaron had a rough go and Rex picked up the W, but I mean, I had the last laugh in the end. Yeah. You just fell victim to uh, numbers game, unfortunately. Right. Um, so the thing I've kind of noticed here is you're constantly kind of fighting these bigger guys. Like, so you've had matches with Rex. I believe you've also had matches with Big Cuz, right? That's and, right. And these guys are are huge. And it's kind of – so how – you kind of touched on it a little bit, but how do you handle fighting, you know, the size difference? Because it's not that you're necessarily small, but you just definitely aren't as, like, bulky – as these guys is that something like you want to continue doing or, or um I, you know we i would i don't know that's, that's a tough question um like do i don't you know my, fighting my, the giants or would you rather stick to guys closer to your size it's I, I, as crazy as it sounds i actually really enjoy going against big cuz and rex it's um my body will tell you no but my my mind and my spirit will tell you yes because it's it's a battle and it's a fight and you know it, it kind of in a weird way it kind of makes you feel alive you know because and and don't get me wrong i've had i've had a lot of scuffles even me and icon when we've done our thing it, it's it's been they've been battles and it's been fun you know win or lose the battle is it's probably the best part of it um, but I mean, yeah, if, if, if they want to run it, I'm, I'm more than glad you can sign me up. I'm, I'm, I'd love it. So you're always up for the challenge. I'm always up for the challenge. So I have to think of some more big guys to throw at you then to see if <laughs> by, by all means you can keep proving yourself. Yeah, that's right. You'd always have that chip. Yeah. Well, speaking of proving yourself, is there anyone either on the, you know, the main roster at NWF or at different, you know, wrestling promotions that you might want to, you know, try and prove yourself against? Um, on the main roster, I think me me and David Tyler have had a couple interactions and through those I've had a lot of fun. It's, it's been a lot of fun, you know, battling against him, going against him. Um, and same with Andrew Reed, uh, me and him at a match in Wilmington. I, I just probably want, it's probably my top three favorite matches I've ever had on future stars. It was me and Andrew Reed in Wilmington. That was a blast. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to, I don't know if that answers your question. I'm going to kind of leave it open. Cause there's just so many that just are open for me and I'm really looking forward to. Okay. Well, so let me, let me throw some guys at you and let's see how you think you would fare against them. What about guys like Ryan stone? Ryan stone. Ooh, that, that would be a fun one. Uh, what about Larry D Larry D that's a big boy. (laughs) (laughs) How what what would you, what's the the likelihood that you would take a best hand in the house against Larry D? Um, or do you think he'd just be so quick that you would dodge it? You know, I can't tell you how it would turn out, but man, I would I'd pay to see it. I would too. I would I would pay to see Larry fight anyone. So <laughs> right, right. Uh, what about Jay Donaldson? What would it Ooh. be like to wrestle him? The stud? The Me and stud? him have wrestled a couple times. You have? Yeah. Yeah, we wrestled. We've 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 tussled a couple times. Um, me and him usually bump heads on Future Stars. It seems like it happens every other show. Yeah, um, no one likes their boss. <laughs> right. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I don't know. I think it'd be a really good match. We, we've had really good matches in the past, and I think, you know, I, I, I just think... And with all those guys, with Ryan, with Larry, with Jay, I think all those guys and me would I, – I think I can adapt pretty well with whoever I'm in there with. Who's got the better track record between you and Jay? 
like um, been lost between you guys? I think it's I think we've had we've had one singles match and then I think we were in a tag together. And I think I'm two and zero against him. Wow, two and zero. Well, he is kind of a loser, so I mean, it makes sense <laughs> that he couldn't win. Well, I'm glad you said it, not me. So I got to <laughs> yeah, deal with some future stars. Yeah, because I won't get the heat on this. Yeah, I mean, I'm just a podcaster. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, you've kind of so the numbers game kind of were against you for a long while until here recently. Uh, you started kind of befriending with. Uh, Jimbo and Hugo, how yeah. did that friendship friendship kind of like come about? Because you guys all kind of seem like opposites. And yeah. Not- well, I mean, you know, they say they say opposite tra- uh, opposites attract. Excuse me. And you know, you know, as a leader, you you see two two young guys who are coming up, and you know, they have this this potential in them, and you know, maybe maybe you want to leave future stars you know better than when you got it you know like before me there was you know the hand-picked champion Rex and then there was then there's me and I'm just trying to change it for the better and then I see these two guys who maybe can take it to even higher levels once I'm gone yeah I think they both have a pretty bright future I think uh yeah I think I think they'll do good things um and speaking of jimbo and speaking of icon from earlier those two are supposed to be battling out for number one contendership uh for your championship and uh who would you rather fight between those two um (laughs) as much as i love beating up icon uh i'm gonna have to go with jimbo on this one um i i I would love to face him more I, i think he's gonna win and I don't know, I think, you know, even even though we're really good friends, I think, you know, at the end of the day, the unified championship is probably most important. You know, it's it's kind of the, you know, it's it's the title that says, you know, you're leader, you're the you're the number one guy, and you got to lead this, you got to lead this ship. Yeah, and so. Uh... With you guys being friends and with the title kind of being in the balance, how do you, you know, kind of split the difference of not letting it get personal? Like if you two were to, you know, have that match, how do you avoid it becoming personal instead of just like friendly? Um, you know, that's that's a good question. I think I think it's human nature to to, to probably want you know, to probably be the best. Um, I think the competitive spirit would probably keep it from getting too personal or, you know, anything like that. Yeah, because I know, you know, just in wrestling in general, all the, all the like sibling rivalries or friendship rivalries, it's always there's a thin line that you're walking in that friendly competition. So just, you know. Keep an eye out on your friend. <laughs> Keep your friends close, right? Yeah, but your enemies even closer. So, <laughs> That's right. I don't know there. All right. Well, uh, in closing, is there anything else you want, uh, you know, the NWF Future Stars Army to know? Or is there anything you want to, like, shout out to them? Um, I will say, you know, I, I don't know when we're coming back, but... When we do, be ready. We miss you guys, and I think we're going to put on one hell of a show. I agree. I think you guys always do a really good job down there. And, I mean, you could take away the Future Stars moniker and just call you guys NWF at times, and I think no one would know the difference because I think you guys are doing a heck of a job down there at the Future Stars division. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are. And um yeah, it's it's and we got, you know, not just Jimbo and Hugo. I mean, the next generation after that, you know, we're always working, we're always training, always trying to improve. And um it's the, the future is bright for sure. Yeah, I would agree with that. 
Uh, where can people find you on the social medias? Uh, on Instagram, I am prodigy underscore NWF. And that is the only social media that I have as of right now. All right. Well, there you go. Um, thanks for your time. I really appreciate the interview. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do in the future. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This next interview, I'm not too sure who Andy is being joined by. I think it's Ella, but it might be Elizabeth. I guess we're just going to have to wait and find out who shows up. All right, folks. Well, now we are joined by Elizabeth, or is it Ella? Hi, it's Elizabeth. You don't need to worry. Ella's not going to be here today. She's actually back in the asylum for a while. Yikes. What, uh... I mean, is she being treated well in this asylum? I mean, is it, it, do you take care of her? Who takes care of her? Um, so it's kind of back and forth. The doctors kind of take care of her, but she, she calls me. She lets me know how she's doing. Um, some days she's good. Other days she's not so good. But she will be back eventually. Okay. I don't know okay. when, but she's coming back. Well, that's terrifying. And, um, you know, if folks don't know what we're talking about, uh, Elizabeth, you are a young wrestler at Northern Wrestling Federation, part of the Future Stars and kind of the main roster, too. And, um, you know, but you have a friend who shows up every once in a while named Ella, um, who's a little scary. But uh, we'll just kind of push her off to the side for now and talk about you. Um, what you know, you miss wrestling right now, obviously, and you know it's the bonds, it's the you know the physical stuff and all that and everything. But you know how how are you doing? Just period, as far as you know, being off from wrestling and and not being around it. You know, I'm doing okay. I mean, I, I feel like everybody in wrestling right now is missing it like everybody even not in wrestling everybody's struggling it's a hard time right now for like the whole world but I'm just kind of trying to see like the bright side of things and use this as an opportunity to just kind of take a step back and really like figure out what I'm doing and do you think that wrestling needs an off season like because I feel like that if if people took a break every once in a while, you know, whether it's a month or it's, you know, it's longer or shorter, I feel like they'd appreciate it a little more. Is that, is that something that, that you think? I do think it would help, like, not maybe maybe not have, like, a set off season, but I think breaks every now and then are would be really, like, useful because no matter how much you love wrestling, like, at some point you're going to get burned out if you're doing it constantly. You know, so like it, just being able to like maybe not have a set off season for everybody, but just whenever you f- start feel like you're starting to get burned out because that can happen at a different time for everybody, you know. But um, yeah, like maybe every now and then just take a break, take a step back. It doesn't matter how long, just just kind of co- take a step back and collect yourself and you'll come back a lot fresher and more motivated it gives folks an opportunity to heal a little bit and, and, you know, heal mentally. And uh, one of the things I always like to ask people like you is that, you know, um, when you got into wrestling, did you have any idea of how like all encompassing it is, how it's like basically your whole life or it's nothing. It's one or the other, right? Right. Yeah. I had no idea. Like I knew that it would definitely be a lifestyle change, with like all the the days like committing to training and all the shows like even before you get to start wrestling like just having to work security like and paying your dues I didn't I knew that there would be some commitment but I didn't realize like how much and like how much of a lifestyle it actually is do you even talk to your old friends anymore no I I honestly (laughs) I I think my old friends that I would hang out with every day literally every day before I started wrestling, they've been to like one or two shows and I never talked to them anymore. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You know, it's um, so crazy. It's obviously I'm not a wrestler, but you know, I'm involved in the wrestling bubble and, and it, it's just nuts how, you know, the people that you were so close with, if they don't like wrestling eh, and they don't want to be part of it or they don't have an open mind, then, you know, all of a sudden they're not going to be a part of your life anymore, which is, it's pretty crazy. Right. Right, for sure. And that's the thing, too, is, like, people either, when you tell them that you wrestle, they're either like, oh, that's awesome, that's so cool, when's the show? Or they're just kind of like, oh, like that's interesting. 
<laughs> What's the most uh, silly reaction or maybe the most uh, obnoxious reaction you've gotten to something like that? Um, let's see. I've gotten some pretty good ones because, like, I work in a restaurant and people will ask me all the time, so are you in school? And I'll just be like, well, I'm in wrestling school. And they'll just, like, look at me and they'll, like... <laughs> Like, it either, like, makes my tip go way up or way down. Like, some, no of, the, like, some of them will, like, want to see pictures and videos all without my phone and show them. But, like, yeah, some of them are just, like, like I don't know. I don't know what their opinion is of wrestling, but you can just tell that they don't really appreciate it. Here's a weird question for you, and I... I find this very interesting. Um, so I served tables when I was younger, and I found that over time – I had the greatest memory ever for like two minutes. Like I can remember everything for two minutes. You could tell me you needed uh, three sides of ranch. One of those cups of ranch needs to be half full of blue cheese, uh, two refills of, you know, three different sodas. And I could just, I could rattle it off as long as two minutes. It was under two minutes. It was over that. I wouldn't remember anything because I was on to the next thing. Right. Wrestling's a lot like that. You know, where you, you yeah. have to be over aware. You have to have this kind of, you know, if you're on Madden, you have to have a 100 awareness to do wrestling. And and I think that serving in a restaurant is kind of the same way a lot of ways. What do you find that's kind of similar about those two things? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that because there's so much multitasking and you always have to be thinking like five steps ahead. Like what you're doing right now, you have to have a game plan for where you're going and like you have to know what you're headed to. You know, and all like be doing multiple things at once. Yeah, you also have to remember stuff for just a yeah. short period of time. You know, which right, is right, right. You know, I, it's crazy to me. I mean, you know, the reaction time of uh, a wrestler has to be on point, and when it isn't, it's obvious. You know, and so that's yeah. one of the things that blows my mind is that you know somebody whispers something to you, and literally a split second later, you have to react to it, and maybe you knew it was coming, maybe you didn't. And wow, you know, uh, that's a little different than a cup of ranch, but it's kind of the same in a lot of ways too. Um, right. <laughs> now, the last time I saw you in a ring, you had a tea party with your friend, uh, Selena and it, it went kind of weird. Uh, Ella ended up showing up if I remember right. And, uh, things didn't go well for Selena. Um, are you still friends with Selena? And you know, if, if so, how is she dealing with all this? Yeah, so I'm not really sure what's going on with Selena. I've tried reaching out to her so many times. I told her Ella's not here right now, but she just won't talk to me for some reason. Like, I, I don't know. We were we used to be best friends, and somehow something got in the way of that. So we're speaking of Selena Dean, or mean Selena Dean, if you want to call her that, because she is kind of mean. Um, I don't know how you were her friend, because, I mean, she said so many mean things to me. One time she just grabbed me by the hand and squeezed as hard as she could. She almost broke my hand. You know, um, it, it's it, she's a mean person, and um, oh, yeah. you have to put up with a lot to be her friend. Um, but, you know, you guys, when all this is said and done, and we're all back, you know, at, at Northern Wrestling Federation, Future Stars, whatever it is, I mean, are you going to beat up Selena? Is that what's going to happen here? I mean, I'm not going to beat up Selena, but there's no telling what Ella might do. Ella called me the other day, and she told me she's not very happy with Selena. I mean, I, she tried giving her so many chances to be her friend, and then, af yeah, after last time, when I had that little tea party for all of us and then Selena came and choked Ella out, like that wasn't very nice. So, I mean, I'll, tr I'll try to talk Ella down, but I don't know what she's going to do. And this is the kind of stuff that you get to see if you go to a future stars, uh, you know, show at Northern Wrestling Federation. You guys are about to celebrate. And that's kind of why we're doing this thing here is to give you guys an opportunity to talk about this thing you love. Um, but you guys are about to celebrate your second anniversary of uh, the future stars. Tell me, you know, I guess here's a cliche question. What's your favorite memory of uh, the two years that, uh, that have passed at this point? Um, let's or, see. I or, think, a, or a memory that you like, you know, whatever. Um, so I think my, my favorite memory or yeah, like a memory that stands out is, um, I don't know if you remember, but the first, like the very f first few future stars, I was just a referee. I was referee Elizabeth. And then Nikki and Tasha or um, Nikki and big mama didn't want to include me in every everything anymore in their matches. So then that's when I introduced Ella to everybody and just everybody's reaction to Ella and 
Ella does this little scream when she little. feels angry. <laughs> <Little> <laughs> scream. It's blood curdling at the, you know, the, if you look up blood curdling scream in the dictionary, there's a picture of Ella standing there with her mouth open <laughs> with like ocean lines coming out of her mouth, you know? So it's, uh, it's terrifying and it is an offensive weapon, right? <laughs> right, right. And yeah, so that's one of Ella's big things. And so I think probably the first time that Ella ever let out that scream, just everybody's reactions. That was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> It still does that, though. That's the thing, you know? I mean, still to this day, when she does that scream, even if you've seen it a hundred times, it's still that that reaction, you know, because, I mean, we as humans, it's like hearing a baby cry. You know, you have this kind of visceral reaction to that, like, you don't like it, you want to take care of it, you want to fix it. And when a young lady screams like that, I'm looking for Godzilla. I'm like, where's King Kong, you know, because he's going (laughs) to... us all um man it's crazy I, now when you speak to ella on the phone does she ever just bust out a scream out of nowhere i mean how does that work over the phone well not to me she's really nice to me so i haven't i haven't heard it yet but that's, i have that's, been hanging out with her over a, a few times and i've heard it but um yeah not over the phone yet though okay all right well yeah i used to have a dog and my dog hated everybody but me I mean, hated him. Like, little kid, he was a little white fluff ball, and a little kid would be like, oh, your dog's pretty, can I pet him? And I'd be like, I mean, no. And then he'd try to, <laughs> you know, and it, it, it's just, I felt bad for him, but, you know, he hated everybody. He just loved me because he knew I was cool, and it turned out that he was just losing his eyesight, and he couldn't tell what was going on. Oh, <laughs> so no. He could smell me, he knew I was all right, you know, but uh, but anyway, well, um. Elizabeth, it is awesome to speak with you, you know, as always. This is your triumphant return of the Road Home from Wrestling podcast, actually. What are some goals that you have in the future, Stars, um, for yourself? I mean, are you going to maybe come back to refereeing? Or are you going to, you know, help guide Ella to, you know, defeat uh, Selena? Or are you going to uh, do something completely different? What do you think? Um, so right now I'm actually injured, so I might not be back at Future Stars right away. But I do know Ella is coming back. She's taking some time in the asylum right now to clear her head and get a little bit better. She'll be back whether it's a week, a month, a year. She will be back. I really hope they're taking precautions. Uh, <laughs> using gloves, you know, and masks and all that stuff at the asylum because that's one thing. That is an essential, uh, you know, business, quote unquote. And so, you know, it's something that's not going to close. And you're not just going to suddenly get Ella dumped on you with no uh, professional guidance. Um, are, are you and everybody you know, is everybody safe and everything and, and not sick? Yeah, I'm not sick. I've tried to get, get breaking Ella out a few times, tried to get her out. But they, yeah, they won't let her. There's everything going on right now. They got to keep the people there and keep people, other people out. Awesome. Well, Elizabeth, do you have any questions for me or is there anything else that you would like to uh, let our audience know? Um, I think that's pretty it. Yeah, just keep coming to future stars. We look forward to seeing you every time. So, Well, we'll be there as much as we can. And uh, as always, um, well, where can folks find you or Ella on social media? Um, so my Instagram and Twitter are both at Ella Scarn. So E-L-L-A. S-C-A-R-N, and then my Facebook is under Ella Elizabeth. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Tell Ella I said hi, and, you know, when I hear her scream, I can probably, she doesn't even need to call me. I can just hear it probably from wherever she's at. So (laughs) I'll I'll let her know. I'll I'll be listening for that, okay? (laughs) All right. All right. (laughs) That Ella, she sure is something. Well, this next interview is between John and one of the favorites, the new favorites at the Future Stars. It's Jimbo. All right. Well, I am joined by the friendliest man in the Northern <laughs> Federation, Jimbo. How's it going, John? John? It is going absolutely fantastic, and I could not be more excited to be, be talking to you from – an appropriate social distance, uh, as, as we have been told we must do. So com- coming from you from, from my podcast studios, i.e. my living room here in Portsmouth, Ohio, talking to the one and only Don, and I couldn't be more excited to be on the show. Wow, Portsmouth, Ohio, where the heck is even that at? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you, you know where Cincinnati is, right? Yes. Uh, and then, then you, you just go east, and then once you've gone east as far as you can go east, you're in Portsmouth. 
so there's like nothing there. Uh, that is correct, sir. Yes, yes. There, there, to, there, so is that close to the like Virginia or not Virginia? Let's see how well I know my map. Uh, like <laughs> Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Listen, it, it, it's it's Eastern Ohio. Uh, no one will like this. It's all the same. You don't actually have to know. It's just Eastern Ohio. So shh, don't 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 let anyone know that though. Yeah, it, it's pretty much it, it's it's the Jimbo family out here, and then that's that's pretty much what you got. Okay, well, uh, really, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Uh, you know, with the whole social distancing thing, because I know your 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 big thing is shaking hands, and uh, that's banned worldwide currently. It's it's been a challenging time. Uh, you, you see, uh, the, the Jimbo family, uh, Mama Jimbo, Papa Jimbo, of course, myself, my sister Jim Bat, and, and little Jimbo, uh, we were very much, I'm sorry? What's your sister's name? Jim Bat. <laughs> okay. You've not, you've not met Jim Bat. She's been to a couple shows. Uh, yeah, I'm going to introduce you to Jim Bat. Uh, but, uh, we, we are a handshaken family. Uh, and, and see, the terrible thing is, is little Jimbo is just coming of age to learn how to properly shake someone's hand. And now we've given him all sorts of confusing messages because now we're telling him don't shake people's hands. But in like a month, we're going to tell him to shake hands again. And it's a very confusing time for, for, for the little guy. So uh, yeah, the, the Jimbo family has been rocked hard by this, um, but we're, we're, we're getting there. We're doing air high fives and it, it's not the oh, same, wow. but like, yeah, we, we feel a, a little bit of connection at least. Wow, that is really tough times you guys have fallen on. And yeah. Sure yeah, no, it's 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 rough. Uh, it, it's these are the rough times, but we understand. I mean, everyone's going through this. Like, people can't can't shake hands with their loved ones. It's a really rough time. Well, I think you're allowed to as long as you're in like the same house, right? Is that what the rules are? That changes everything. Are you yeah. serious, John? Yeah, it's like don't shake like like me and you can't shake hands, but like you guys are sharing the same germs in the same house, so shake all the hands you want. I would think. My my mind has been blown, John, and I I get to go back to the rest of the Jimbo family, and I can shake hands this afternoon. Oh my god! I'm well, going to shake think? everyone's hand twice, probably. Wow! Use both hands. And uh, one of the things we're most humble about here at the Road Home for Wrestling is that we are educational first, and I'm glad that I was able to educate you today. You absolutely have been able to educate me on on, on the handshake. And I will say this, I, I will go on record saying this, I'm a proponent of the double hand handshake. It is my ideal handshake, frankly. Okay, well, you can do that all day with only the people in your residency. It does make me sad that I can't do it with my, my wrestling brethren and sister in, but, uh, you know, at least if I can shake hands with my own family, that's where we're halfway there. We've won half the battle. That's right. Uh, so I need you to educate me on something, though, real quick. So okay. your name is Jimbo. That's but, right. Uh, Mama and Didi, or Papa, as you called him, I like Didi a lot better. Uh, their names are also Jimbo. So, like, is Jimbo your last name, or is it your first name, or you are like Jimbo Jimbo? Uh, no, it, it's it's like a Madonna situation. Do you, do you know the pop star Madonna from the '80s? Yes, I'm familiar. Okay, yeah. Do you know how she's just Madonna? Yes. Yeah. See, uh, Jimbo. So it's like you've got Madonna on one side, and then it's Jimbo. So very similar situation. And then obviously, again, Papa Jimbo and Mama Jimbo and Jim Bat and Little Jimbo. So how did Jim Bat uh, not get the Jimbo legacy? Well, I mean, she did, but she's <sighs> all right. I, I never like to talk bad about anyone, but Jim Bat's a little bit of the rebel of the family, if, if we're being honest. Um, so she didn't fully. Uh, it's who. Personal family issues, hard to talk about, John, um, can can be rough sometimes. Uh, and Jim Bet, ah, Jim Bet, she's a wild card, uh, real wild card, that one. And, uh, you know, uh, we would we would like to bring her back into the Jimbo name proper. Uh, but she's she's got to find the time and place that works for her for that. Yeah, sometimes we all have to go on our own and discover ourselves. And, you know, maybe the road will lead her back to the Jim Bob name, not Jim Bob, Jimbo. We, we can only help. Okay, well, uh, so the whole family, it seems like, is in the wrestling biz, right? Uh, a, a good deal of them, yes, yes. 
Because I know for you, uh, one of the things you take pride in is you wear Mama Jimbo and Didi Jimbo's boots to the ring. And uh, I'm slightly confused by that. Does that mean like Mama and Didi both have the same size foot? Or are you like squeezing into Mama's shoe? Like how did how did you get their boots? Are they wrestling uh, with just one boot now? All right. So there's a, there, there's a story here. Okay. You, you, you saddle in for this one, John. So. Yes. All right, yeah. All right, so so M- Mama Jimbo was really the the prodigy of the wrestling Jimbo family. Um, I, I I don't know if, if you all remember uh, Portsmouth, Ohio Southeast Wrestling, but she was their world champion thirty two times. Thirty two time Southwest Portsmouth, Ohio champion was Mama Jimbo. Uh, great wrestling lineage. Uh, Papa Jimbo, good wrestler. Uh, you know, not quite the same legacy, but good wrestler. Uh, Mama Jimbo lost uh, in her in her farewell match. Uh, she lost her her right boot to a crocodile. Um, and during that uh, during that match, so she only had one boot to give me. Uh, and Papa Jimbo, most of his boots are worn out, so that's why we we taped him up uh, nice and good. But yeah, she she gave me her one remaining wrestling boot from her farewell match. Uh, that wasn't eaten by the crocodile. And then Papa Jimbo, he gave me uh, one of his boots and we got to put those together. And thank goodness. I mean, we all have the same shoe size, even Jim Bat. Uh, and so it worked out really, really well that I could wear those and sort of honor their lineage moving forward. So did it just eat her boot or did it eat like her whole foot? Uh, no, just the boot. No, she she got it out in time. Um, the the I mean the sad thing was the the, the alligator did win the match, uh, and that's how she lost her her, her last championship. Uh, but no, her her foot was intact. It only lost the boot. Okay, well, thank goodness, because that I, that story was ending tragically. I thought. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no tragic ending. It was just it was just her time. You know, I said she had, she had, she really wanted to have that thirty second title reign, and the fact that she she got to have that, even if it was short lived, and even if that filthy crocodile cheated during that match, she did get to have that thirty second reign, and that's what mattered. Okay, so it was very similar to like WrestleMania. I think it was ten where Yokozuna beat. Bret Hart for the title, and then Hogan came out and like threw powder in Yokozuna's face, and then beat him for the chi- the championship belt. But everyone thought, oh, since he's the hero, like he didn't cheat, but he clearly did cheat. You know, I never thought about that, but I think that's almost exactly what happened if Hulk Hogan was a crocodile. I mean, some people would say he's a predator, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so. So you have uh, you've been at, uh, you know, the NWF for a little while now. Um, what made you decide to come to Bone Crushers to start training when you yeah. have such a, such a great influence at home? Who could have done it <laughs> for you? Yeah, so obviously, you know, the, the, the Southwest Portsmouth, Ohio Wrestling League uh, is, is an incredibly prestigious league, I'm sure. Uh, but I, uh, you know, when I was looking to start training, I kind of looked around and I lived in Cincinnati uh, and kind of looked around a little bit to go, OK, kind of what's what's around here. Um, and I saw, uh, obviously, the NWF uh, and the NWF facilities. Uh, and I um, uh, true story here went to went to one of their shows and it was. Um, it was a show this time, not this time, uh, about a little over a year ago. Um, it was Royal Rumble weekend. I remember that last year. Uh, and I was like, I'm interested in, in doing this, this pro wrestling thing, you know, li- following the lineage of the rest of the Jimbo family. Yes. And uh, so I, I went to an NWF show and I was like, let me check this out because this, this seemed really cool. Um, and I, I have a couple of stark memories from that show. Uh, one being it was uh, Nikki Victory versus Jay Donaldson in a winner gets to remove his mask match. And I had no idea how to understand that sentence I just said as I was reading the poster. Um, and I was like, this sounds like the greatest thing in the world. And I went and I vividly remember the match uh, that, that they had. And, and Jay, the, the, the cheating little devil that he is, he, he won that and got to remove his mask. Uh, and then I also remember uh, uh, the, the Hollywood guys uh, were out there doing the match. I remember the three of them running around just in total rotten disregard for, for anything of the rules. And I was like, well, someone needs to beat these people up clearly. And this place just seems like it's absolutely awesome. And this is where I want to train. And this is where I want to be a wrestler. Uh, so it was about a, a, a month or two after that, uh, that I started, started training, uh, met, met Roger Ruffin, who of course who owns the place and started training with the NWF. 
Okay, and so you mentioned, I, I very vividly remember that show, and Nikki Victory and Jay Donaldson was a stellar match. Uh, but you mentioned the Hollywood Boys. Yeah. And, uh, I, here, you know, as of late, you've had your run-ins with them, and you've been completely starstruck by Adam Swayze. And, uh, you know, how's that been, being able to interact with your, your idol like that? Okay, so this is this is kind of embarrassing. Okay, John, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to admit this. So while while Swayze doesn't always use the best means uh, when he's wrestling, and he should obey the rules a lot more than what he does, and he shouldn't. Frankly, he's a great wrestler. He doesn't need the help of Rex or Gideon. But I'm 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 going on a tangent. Um, I I was always a big fan of Adam Swayze. I was a huge fan of Adam Swayze. After that first show I watched, I was like, this is the guy. Uh, I, I just was, was flabbergasted. And so it was my second ever wrestling match. And I was supposed to uh, wrestle Rex. Uh, and I was excited for that, too, because Rex is, I mean, just a giant of a man. Uh, and again, I've been, been wrestling my, uh, my cow Betsy since, I mean, before I was knee high to her. Uh, so wrestling Rex was pretty much like the same thing. And it was great. Uh, but uh, Rex uh, got himself uh, not half stupid the night before at an NWA show uh so when i i confront him like hey we're gonna do the match he was like hey i I ain't gonna quite pull it off tonight so i then was like well if i can't wrestle one hollywood can i i wrestle the other and me and swayze gotta have a match it was my my second ever match and i was i can't tell you how nervous i was about that because i was like this is the guy that i saw you know at that point whatever it was seven eight months ago uh and one of the people who was like i want to get into wrestling because of uh because of swayze and i'm getting to have a match with him uh, and we had a, a fantastic match. Uh, for the record, I did win that match, uh, which is what allowed me to get a title match against Rex the the, the next time we were uh, there at Future Stars, uh, and then got to got, got to wrestle that that giant, have that fantastic match as well as uh, Rex is. Oh. Rex is a strong bull, uh, and me, me, me and him, uh, we, we, we laid into each other, and I was so close to that unified title, but didn't didn't end up happening. So yeah, my my interactions with the uh, with, with the Hollywood group has been a uh, has, has been you know overall really good. Uh, if they didn't cheat, I would be a lot happier with them, and I think maybe maybe if they come down to Portsmouth a little bit and work at the farm with me, maybe we can teach them some good ethics. So do you have a better win loss record over Bessie or is it Bessie or Betsy? Betsy. Betsy. Do you have a better win loss record over Betsy or Rex at this point? Oh, um, uh, I'd have to think about my one with Rex is, but Betsy, it's, it's hard to get a pin on Betsy. Very sturdy. Four legs really helps in wrestling. We've been telling Betsy forever that she needs to come and train, but uh, she's she's a bit of a loose cannon. I don't know that that Betsy could could follow all the rules to to truly be uh, an NWF wrestler. But uh, no, I I've only actually beaten Betsy twice. Um, wow. And yeah, what, what, one of those was actually I just took advantage. She she slipped on her own cow pie, uh, and I got the quick roll up one two three on her. Uh, and then we had one just slobber knocker of a match um, uh, in the uh, oh what, what was it? It was the the, the uh, Millennium Brawl. We uh, yeah on, on New Year's we fought um, and uh, we, we went an hour and forty five minutes before I finally put her down. It was frankly probably one of my best matches. That is a very long match. I don't I don't know how you did it. That is more than an Iron Man. Uh, it was. It, it was an Iron Man and three quarters, an Iron Man and Cal. Uh, went, went down in, in, in history of, of Fort Smith, Ohio wrestling. It sounds like it. Uh, so you've made some friends around the Future Stars division. I have. Uh, notably, uh, Kobe Kane and Hugo. How did that relationship start? Because it kind of seems like you guys are all opposites. Oh, you think we are? I think I so never a really... bit. I never really thought that way, but uh, so I can. All right, uh, I, I have I have a story for each of them. Okay, so uh, Hugo, uh, Hugo came in. Um, uh, of course, he's uh, he, he's over from Hawaii, and he came in specifically to uh, uh, to train in the NWF. And I won't, uh, you know, he can share that story with you. Uh, but uh, he started training just about the same time I did. I think he started literally the week after. Uh, so me and him were very much training buddies early on. We we had a, a group we called we called the new crew that all sort of uh, came together uh, uh, around the same time last year to start training at the NWF. And 
Um, me and Hugo always really got along well. Uh, we got a debut uh, in the same match at FanFest last year. Uh, and then it was a couple weeks after that. We both got to have our first singles matches on the debut. Uh, and Hugo is... He, he is what NWF wrestling is. He, he is an honorable wrestler. He's an incredible talent, uh, just an unbelievably uh, good guy. And uh, so Hugo, me and him were, were sort of kindred spirits from day one. Uh, Kobe Kane. Uh, Kobe is uh, definitely an, an inspiration. Uh, of course, he he used to slash still does, you know, go under the name Prodigy. And when when I first started, it was you know, oh here's here's Prodigy, and I got to see that man wrestle and just. I, I was a kid at Christmas watching him work in the ring and still am uh, because every time he's in that ring, he, he's why he's our our, our unified champ uh, because the talent. And I'll tell you this. I hate the word talent because I, and I'll say this as an example for him. I don't think Kobe Kane uh, is, is what people would call talented because I see the work that that man puts in every day, every single week. It's no natural talent for him or just about anyone that I met. It's the work that people put in that makes them good. And Prodigy has lived up to that name without question. He's been a very much an inspiration for mine. And as we're sort of having this tournament to get an opportunity to, to face him, because he's our, you know, our, our new champion going into this new era, I'm, I'm so excited. I've got one more hurdle that I have to get to and really focus on. Uh, but if I can, if I can beat icon at the next show, I get a chance to go against Kobe Kane for that unified title. And I said, I only had one other opportunity against Rex, but uh, me and Kobe Kane getting an opportunity to uh, hold, hold that belt and the future and the next generation of the future stars. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting little goosebumps here just talking about it. So one of my things is a lot of times when friends fight each other, uh, things don't always turn out so nicely at the end. So if you are able to be icon, which I'm sure you're going to be able to very swiftly. Uh, ooh, uh, uh, you, you know, I, I'm just going to say it. Every, everyone can have their own opinion about him. If you watch that man work in the ring, he's good. Uh, he, he, he is, he is going to be a challenge to get through. And actually I've been, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say, say happy that our original matches has gotten postponed and it'll be at the next show, but, uh, the ability to take the extra time I have been training nonstop, uh, to have an opportunity to, to really, really try and win this tournament. So I didn't mean to cut you off, John, but I, I just, I had to, I had to get in there. I, icon is no joke. Well, he also has his little minion, Chris Demise, on the outside to cause interference if needed. So that's I think that's another thing you have to pay attention to when you're fighting someone like him, because he's always got people lurking in the shadows ready to pounce. You know, uh, Mr. Demise, I've, I've only had a, a little bit of interaction between me and him, and I just think... He could have been such a good guy, and he just fell into the wrong crowd. And, I mean, if you watch Prodigy Story, it was the same thing. He he fell into that crowd, too, but he he pulled himself out of it. And I I have hope for, for Mr. Demise. I think if we can... If we can show him him the light, show him the path, I, 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 think, I think he can be something. Uh, but you're right. Icon will, will, will probably have Mr. Demise out there with him. And, uh, you know, I, I, think, I think we'll have a fair match. I always believe we'll have a fair match because that's what matters at the NWF and this new era that we're in. What was that last part? I think you cut up a little bit. Oh, uh, I, 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 I truly believe that we are going to have a good, fair match and that there's not going to be any interference. There's not going to be any nonsense. Uh, and instead, me and Icon are truly going to be able to meet one-on-one -on -one and determine who is the better wrestler, because that's what matters in this future, uh, this new era of the NW app. I hope you're right, because I've been watching Icon for a couple years now, and I know that he has a lot of tricks up his sleeves. Uh, I mean, if you, if you want to give him props, I know he's really good on the mic, and he's really good at brainwashing people. And so uh, that's one of the things you got to watch out as well, because he's he's good at cutting promos and making you think about things. Uh, he is. But I mean, we do actually have a lot of common ground because he's a big fan of sheep. I love sheep. Uh, they're one of the best animals. So I think we have a, a lot of connection where we're closer than than I think maybe even he realizes. You're both shepherds. 
Shepherds we are both sheep. shepherds. Good. Uh, but back to Kobe Kane originally, uh, a lot of times when friends fight, like they, they don't turn out, uh, things, things on the other end don't come out smoothly. A lot of times there's animosity that builds up. So how are you going to be able to, if you do get a chance to fight Kobe Kane, how are you going to keep, you know, your friendship aside from the title match? Oh, that's John. That's such a good question. Uh, Cause it's hard for a lot of people, you know, ultimately, you know, Kobe Kane, he, he's our unified champion. I am proud to say that he is our unified champion. He's not, he's not a hand picked champion like we had before. Uh, you know, he, he got it because he earned it and he made it happen and he won. Uh, and I have, have nothing but respect for him. But if I do beat icon and i do get the opportunity to go against him for the unified title i want to win i i i i'm not gonna take it easy on him i'm i'm actually going to go harder on him than i would anyone uh because he is the best of the future stars and if i want to to climb that mountaintop if i want to be there i I want to be the best of the future stars, John. I really do. It, it's why I love this. It's why I do this. I have to be there. And to be the best, I have to beat Kobe Kane and win that unified title. Uh, so I'm, and I have no, no hard feelings uh, about that. And I, you know, if we, if, if we get there, um, you know, I, I hope he will walk into that match with, with the same mentality. And I'm sure that he is. Uh, you know, when, when I walked into the NWF and I stuck my hand out to everyone wanting to shake hands, he was the first guy to shake my hand back. And I don't think we're going to have problems when, if, uh, if, if we see each other. Okay, that's good to know. It's very impressive. But there are two, new, two newer guys that have kind of been, you know, who have not had anyone's back except for each other. And they've kind of been a thorn in your guys' side, uh, Dakota Wolf and Zachary Slater. What's the what's their deal? So this is this is a bit of point of contention. Uh, you, you're you're absolutely right. Uh, we we had these two outside guys, Dakota Wolf and Zachary Slater, show up uh, at the last show and really interfere with a lot of the the honorable proceedings of the nwf future stars uh they attacked hugo before the match uh they came out after my match and if it wasn't for for kobe jumping and saving me i don't know what would have happened because they came out with chairs on me um they seemingly as far as i can tell aren't signed to the nwf uh that they're not future stars uh they showed up from who knows where and they're allowing them to come in and wrestle at this next show and i'm sitting here going i've not seen them at training i've not seen what they're doing i how are we allowing these outside guys who just have no disregard for anything that we do and we're just going to open the doors for them now Listen, I, I know there are certain people that are running the show, and, and those people aren't Jimbo. Uh, but if Jimbo was running the show, we would have extra security all around that place. And if Zachary Wolf uh, or, or Zach Slater or Dakota Wolf showed up, they would be kicked out of that building. And that's, that's my opinion on them. We shouldn't be welcoming them with opening doors. Wow, that's a very strong stance. Listen, if, if they want to come in and, and, and be future stars, listen, the door's open. Come in and be future stars and do it the right way. You know, I, I, attacking people after matches, before matches, uh, all of that, that's not the way to do it. Okay, I agree. You know, we're on the same page on that one. But, you know. Uh, so in closing, closing thoughts here, is there – so eventually at some, at some point you are going to want to climb that ladder and get to the main roster of the NWF. Yeah. Is there anyone up there right now that you are just chomping at the bit to get a match with? There, there, there is. And I don't know if you're going to like the answer. Okay. So another, another brief story time. Okay. Um, I, I, I listen, I listen to the road home from, from podcast wrestling religiously. Okay. Uh, we <laughs> went home from wrestling. Yes. I, I listened to the road home. I, I said that right. Didn't I? No. I listened to your show. John, I listen to your show. I love your show. We have Good it on radio, re- guys. It's fine. Yes, we, we we have it on repeat in our living room in the Jimbo household at all times. Uh, it, it's a fantastic show. But there's there's one guy that that you all don't always like, and he's the guy I most want to have a match with. 
and th- and that would be well, he goes by the name Joshua now. Um, uh, and but he was he was Josh at the time, and I was such a fan. Josh was Mama Jimbo's absolute favorite wrestler, and when she came, oh, uh, this still makes me mad because I was mad too. Um, Fan Fest last year. I woke up that morning. The Jimbo family. We talked about it over morning breakfast, and that was the only thing we wanted to see was Josh as our NWF champion. And that night ended. And Josh wasn't our NWF champion. Joshua was. And it broke Mama Jimbo's heart. What happened? I want to avenge the breaking of Mama Jimbo's heart. And I want a match with Joshua. I don't care about the title. I don't need anything like that. I need to 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 beat some nice back in Joshua. And that's the guy that I want to wrestle on the main roster. Okay. I mean, I used to also, I used to be a huge fan of Josh Adams, but now that he has, it's the, all the other guys who hate Josh Adams. I, I was a big fan. Uh, what, what was Mama Jimbo's favorite part? Was was she just like stuck, all struck by his abs or was it his uh, just fantastic wrestling maneuvers? What, what, what made her love him so much? I, you know, I think you'd have to have Mama Jimbo come on on the podcast and and talk to you about that uh, to to get a true true answer from her. Um, but uh, I, I I'm not gonna lie. I uh, I I think she, uh, she she fancies herself a handsome man. And uh, listen, hey, not, nothing nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, and, uh, and and maybe that was was part of the part of the factor in there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, no shame on her, but, uh, so, so what's next for Jimbo once we get out of quarantine, obviously we got the contenders match and then I guess I just answered the question there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The, 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 the the next thing for Jimbo is, is all of my attention is, is on Mr. Icon, uh, as Mr. Icon, a a sheep lover versus a sheep lover. We're going to learn who loves sheep the most, uh, in, in our match. And that is where all of my attention is. Uh, me and him, because if, if, if I can beat Icon, then I get a shot against Kobe Kane at that NWF Unified Championship. And that is that is where all of my attention and focus has been. Okay. Well, uh, is there anywhere anybody can find you on the, the interwebs? you got any social media plugs? Oh, well, I, I don't. Um, I, I guess I should, but I don't. Uh, no, uh, J- J- Jimbo has not been good about uh, getting on that, on the, the, the Twitters and the Instagrams. Uh, but soon, I think. I think Jimbo will, will have all that soon. So for now, the best place to, uh, to, to find me, to interact with me, is uh, uh, as, as soon as the NWF shows are, are, are running. Uh, that's where I'll be. Okay, and I'm assuming you'll be handing out Jimbo name tags like usual? I, of course. I have so many because I bulk ordered 50,000 of them uh, prior to this happening. And they just arrived like last week and have filled up most of our garage. Uh, and, and Papa Jimbo is not too happy about that. Uh, so I need to get those things like delivered to people. So, yeah, there will be Jimbo stickers will abound. Well, and if, if worse comes to worst and you run out of toilet paper, I guess you have some extra you know, name tags. <laughs> use if needed oh for some reason that makes me sad but yes that is that is painfully very true all right well jimbo it was great talking to you and i cannot wait to see what happens in the future love it thanks for having me on john and now your main event of this podcast the voice of the future noah gabriel let's listen to how he's hoping to make his boyhood dream of becoming a professional wrestler into a reality. All right, folks. Well, we're now joined by Noah Gabriel. Noah Gabriel, you've been known as the future voice of the NWF, but now you're born to wrestle. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm okay. Uh, you don't sound all right. You sound kind of, I don't know, upset about something. I know that you're stuck at home. You can't wrestle, and that's what you were born to do, so that's got to get you kind of pissed off, right? I, I mean, there's a lot of things kind of going on in my mind. Um, I mean, the one thing that's kind of helping me is that over on face on Facebook at Northern Wrestling Federation, uh, I've been doing some commentary for NWF exclusives, so that's been kind of helping me. But it's also been kind of hurting me a little bit because, you know, as I'm watching these matches, and these are some incredible matches, you know, I can't help but to think that, you know, I should be there. 
and it's all because of one guy. And what you're speaking of is that you know the you're a part of what's known as the Future Stars uh, at uh, Northern Wrestling Federation, and this is kind of yeah. a a school type scenario where basically you are a student there, and you know the students get to kind of perform on these shows. Now you guys had a big anniversary show scheduled for the April 19th, and the GD virus has ruined all of wrestling. So you know that's not going to happen anymore. But before you were kind of going into this thing thinking that you were going to have a match with Jay, maybe. Um, and you know, that would lead to a contract with NWF. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what my, what I was hoping for. Um, he was leading up to it. Uh, and even still now he was ducking my calls and ducking me backstage at events and stuff. He was almost pretty much avoiding me for, so I, it was really, really frustrating. And, uh, but yeah, I am part of what we call the future stars division. And uh, it's been a blast. Um, it, it's I think that's what makes us un- one of the things that makes us unique from every other uh, local indie promotion is we have basically two successful brands with with a better way not a better way to put it. Uh, granted, it, it is all student led, but at the same time, you know, we weren't guaranteed a first, you know, or excuse me, a second showing and here we are two years later just as strong if not stronger than the beginning april 19th is the two-year anniversary of the future stars i've been to most of the shows there's a few i've missed unfortunately um but uh you know the last show that i was at you know you and jay donaldson and that's that's the jay we're uh, speaking of not uh, the letter J. Jay donaldson who is kind of been in charge of the future stars um, for a while, and this guy has been a real jerk. I mean, he's talking about your little brother, which is not okay. And then, uh, you know, and, and, and so you want to fight him, not only to get revenge, but also to prove yourself. Noah, what makes you think that, that uh, you can do all this? What, what makes you think that you can prove yourself to, to someone who's a veteran like Jay? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> he keeps saying... You know, oh, you haven't won one. You haven't beaten anybody to prove yourself, yada, yada, yada. Well, last time I checked, Jay, didn't he go on like a six-month losing streak recently? It was and, long, longer than that. Yeah, he had to wear yeah. a mask and everything. It was yeah. it, He looked ridiculous. And, you know, I don't see a championship in the grand scheme of things. What the people look for is heart. And that's something that I have that nobody else in the division has. Because there's been a lot of people that I'm willing to bet that if they were in my shoes watching people pass them by one after one after one, they would have tucked tail and left. But I've still been here showing not only Jay, but to the but to management at large that, hey, Noah Gabriel is here to stay. He'll do whatever it takes to show everybody that he was born to wrestle. Well, and that's kind of, that's what you've done is that you've been kind of the utility guy there at uh, NWF doing everything that you can backstage, um, you know, in a way taking the Golden Boys place as far as being the guy that's there first, being the guy that's there last and all that kind of stuff. That's okay. I pinned him. I can say whatever I want about it. (laughs) But, uh, well, you know, one thing I would say about Jay is that you can't trust him. You know, he just recently turned on people that he has claimed are his best friends, people that he was protected with. One guy, um, you know, uh, Nate Peel and, uh, you know, and, and the champion, he's turning on these guys. He's a flip flopper. You don't know what he's going to do next. How do you think that this kind of change of heart uh, you know, between Jay and some of these guys is going to affect you, or is it all a ruse? Dude, this is something that kept me up at night thinking about it. Because uh, on one hand, on the surface, that is, it looks great. You 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 see this guy who's finally turned over a new leaf, but at the same time, that I was at the same time, it's hard to accept a guy who's acted the way he's acted to change 
like that. You know what I mean? And he still, even after him changing who he is, he's still ducking me. He's still not answering my text messages. He's still not giving me an answer. If he really changed and now is the person who he says he is, don't you think he would have at least given me something? But no. No, no he's a liar. He says he's 22. He's obviously not 22. Okay. You know? Not, he, we've all kind of accepted the fact that he's not 22 except him, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, well, it, it's just frustrating. Well, I, you know, I have a hard question for you, Noah, and I can't call myself a legitimate journalist, which is 100% what I am, uh, without asking you this question, and that is, why is it all about Jay? Why isn't this all about you? Why are you blaming Jay for all your problems and not taking personal responsibility for your problems? And again, that's just the devil ad- devil's advocate in me asking that question. I, I think you're right, but... I'm not asking for much. I'm asking for one opportunity to show everybody that I have what it takes to become a wrestler. And this is going to sound super cliche and super cheesy, but it's the God honest truth. Pro wrestling has been my dream ever since I was four years old. And I've fought for it hard, and I feel like it's being taken away from me. Pro wrestling is my escape. It's my it, it, it's my antidepressant. It's my escape from all the stresses in the world. And because I can't live up to one man's expectations, I'm not allowed to lace up a pair of boots and put on a pair of knee pads to do what I believe I was put on this earth to do. And, you know, everybody... And when I say everybody, I mean the Future Stars locker room. Some of the guys have said, you know what, you st- stay in there, keep your head high, you're going to get there one day. But again, they don't know what it's like to be in my shoes. If you were in my position, you'd be asking the same way. And it's all because I can't live up to one guy's expectation. So what you're saying is, is that... Folks should believe in you because not only, you know, have you succeeded at all these other things, you know, like you said, the the announcing, the, uh, you know, play by play, the, um, you know, just the, the backstage stuff that we don't get to see as fans. You've succeeded at all those things when maybe people doubted you at those things. Um, and here we are. We're doubting you in the ring. And maybe we shouldn't, you know, uh, maybe it's one of those things where um, you give someone like Noah a chance um, and it's it's, you know, the type of situation where you're going to surprise us. And that's uh, that's what wrestling's all about, you know, is uh, subverting expectations and, and helping people look amazing. And that, that's kind of what it's all about. So it sounds like that you're ready to subvert some expectations and you're ready to earn that spot whenever we get back to what we all love to do best. Is that right? Absolutely. And just as a quick shout, don't make it seem like I'm, you know, not grateful for being an announcer. I've had great time. I've had a great time doing announcing. I've, you know, had a lot of memories created, but at the same time, you know, I've always had that itch. I've always had that. What if, and I think now it's, I think now's the time to capitalize on it. Outstanding. Well, Noah, I believe in you, you know, but I had to ask you the tough questions. Like I said, it's part of my job, you know. Hey, it it threw me a little off guard, but, you know, we got through it. (laughs) Well, I I would have to throw away my master's in journalism if I didn't ask those questions. And I absolutely have a master's in journalism, and I'm not willing to throw it away. So, um, where'd you come from? Um, you know, the, the podcasting school. It's, uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the one. I know the one. uh, It's, uh, PU. Podcasting University. That's where I got it. So, um, <laughs> so uh, anyway, well, no, uh, um, where can folks find you? Where can they watch Northern Wrestling Federation while uh, we're all cooped up inside? All right. So we'll do the Northern Wrestling Federation question first. Uh, so the NWF has been putting out a match a night, and we got a lot of great matches lined up through, uh, through all out this week. Um, you can like them on Facebook and Northern Wrestling Federation. Uh, you can also follow them on Instagram and Twitter. At NWF Wrestling. Uh, you can also follow the Future Stars on Instagram and Twitter at Future Stars NWF. Oh, excuse me. 
and uh, follow us at on our uh, group in, on Facebook for Future Stars, Northern Wrestling Federation, Future Stars Army. And then me, uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Noah G underscore 2099. Folks, uh, you know, need to come out to these shows. They're a lot of fun when everything starts rolling again. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to be just a little part of helping you guys celebrate the anniversary uh, in a way that you weren't expecting, but hopefully in a way that'll be fun. Noah, do you have any questions for me or any uh, any other messages for our guests or for our listeners? Uh, well, you told me uh, that Jay may or may not be part of this. And if he is listening back... I just want him to know that I'm not going anywhere. I will one day wrestle for you. It's only a matter of when, not if. That's right. There you go, Jay, in your stupid face. So uh, awesome. Well, thanks so much, Noah. Uh, We'll see you around, all right? All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today on this Northern Wrestling Federation Future Stars Extravaganza episode. I hope you really enjoyed it and help uh, these kids celebrate their second year of doing what they love to do. Uh, you can follow our show at the Road Home FW on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can follow me at Jerusifer Tweets on Twitter, and you can follow John at JHat05. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you on the Road Home. <laughs>